My name is Natalie Roy. I teach Roman technology, classical mythology, and Latin at Glasgow Middle School in Baton Rouge. I'm passionate about STEM integration into subject areas that don't normally incorporate STEM, such as social studies, classical mythology, and Latin. The students in this video are in the 6th, 7th, and 8th grades. The content of this lesson is a Roman technology class. The curriculum for this class was created by me for all types of learners. In the class, we recreate the products and processes of the ancient Romans through experimental archeology. span We explore the stem of the ancient Roman world as makers. The lesson objectives ask students to draw and label a diagram and then produce a 3D model of an ancient Roman kiln, which they will eventually build and fire using actual building materials. Prior to this lesson, during the fall semester, students completed two units of study which relate to the current unit. In October, they mixed and set ancient Roman concrete according to the original Roman recipe. They tested its tensile strength and compared it to modern concrete. In December, they studied, built, and baked in their own handmade Roman bread ovens. That unit prepared them for work on thermal energy transfer and its use in much hotter ovens called kilns. Kilns were used by the ancient Romans to produce lime for concrete, charcoal for metalwork, and pottery for everyday use. In our most recent class, the students did preliminary research on ancient Roman kilns, posted questions they wondered about, and then expressed their choice by voting on the type of kiln they were most interested in recreating. This unit on thermal energy and Roman kilns is one I'm developing as part of my work as a STEM fellow for the Foundation for East Baton Rouge Parish Schools. It supports the next generation science standards with special attention to engineering practices. Because the students in this class are from varying grade levels and thus at different points in the math and science curricula, I've prearranged partnerships for their work today so that older students work with younger ones in case they need help filling in knowledge gaps. To guide the students' work, I've created a diagram template pointing the students toward necessary components of an ancient Roman kiln. All right, so what I want y'all to do is simply look over the questions that you were wondering about last time when we did our research. And you're gonna go ahead and pick two. One from the yellow board, one from the blue board. And I don't want it to be your question, I want it to be someone else's. So feel free to look those over right now. Pick two. And I want you to think about how you would categorize those questions, okay? Some, we've already made some categories up on the board from the other class. Two categories we've used, as you can see over there, are pottery and building or engineering. But there may be another category that we need to explore further, okay? So just take some time to kind of read over. You can come around this way if you need to. There's nobody over here by the blue board. So go ahead and do that now. As you can see, Andrew's writing in a completely other category now which is fine. If you think your question goes there and that we need to do more research on charcoal, feel free to add your question to that area. Uh, would like location go under the building and the engineering? Okay. Or, or you can add I'm for that area. or maybe, maybe it's a completely different category. How many of you think that your drawing is really, really good? OK. 
Okay. Right. How many of you think that you need assistance and really want to work with someone else to kind of help you, you know, come up with a better design? Okay. All right. So some of you are very confident. Some of you are not so much. That's okay. Because we're at the very beginning of the process, right? You're going to have plenty of time to work out your design before you actually build it. So don't worry about that. But I've had a couple of questions, so let's address a couple of things. Ba very basically, a kiln works how? Where does the fuel go? Under it. Okay. Why is that? Why do you want your fuel at the bottom? So the heat can go up. Okay, up. because heat does what, everyone? Go up. Rises. Yes. Rises. That's yeah. correct. So your fuel is going to have to be at the bottom of your kiln. However your kiln is designed, your fuel will have to be at the bottom. And what type of kiln is this going to be, Craig? What are you going to be firing in it? Oh. Uh, Have you decided yet? No, but I have to think like charcoal. Okay, so you're going to be creating more fuel. All right. All right, so y'all just go ahead and work. create just now there. We created the opening. Probably, we should probably add like more of these blocks or something. But is the fire, does the fire need to be like really big? Yeah, I guess. Okay. Cause I mean like it's supposed to be firing pottery, so. Okay, so more of these. Maybe we should okay, build so is this like a lid on it? Yeah. We're gonna make a chimney and then we're gonna put a lid on it. think about something a lesson we learned with arches right and that arches need bolstering on either side mm -hmm. so just think about how you can make that happen so that that structure you think if we does put not these fall. on top of them it's not gonna fall Oh, you was thinking like this? Yes. All right, you can do it like that. So it could support yeah. it. Support. Circuit or like curved blocks to make it into a dome structure like we had planned. Mm -hmm. So we just mm. decided to go with a box. Okay. So like a flat roof. Yeah. Okay. 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 So how are you going to contain your roof? How are you going to contain your heat? Um, Is it going to be an imaginary roof? No. Or we're on camera. You're actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're gonna do a dome for the middle part. And then okay, the and then we're supposed to imagine that the dome goes all the way across. Gotcha. What are you doing? So tell me about your kiln. What are the parts, different areas of your kiln? Um, the 
this is where we would put the fire and fuel. Look, look at the This is where we would put the fire and the fuel. Mm -hmm. This was supposed to be our peephole. It's partially filled in. And then we turned some blocks so that we could have a, like a platform or a shelf for the pots on the inside. How are you gonna do anything clever? Clever. Clever. You need a area. You need to clean the Okay, and then. And here is our pottery blocks that we can no longer get out. That's our pottery. Pottery. And then. And then, put this back on. And then there's a peephole on top. Like some of the smoke. Yeah, at least I'm not really seeing what you're seeing. I'm running. Okay, I'm going to go. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Pretty good. Except we're not going to use these. We're going to actually use them. Yeah. <laughs> But this is significantly different from your previous design. Yeah. The well, previous one we realized it was just too big and too much. It was mm -hmm. unstable yeah. with not enough balance. And in real life, if we made that wide, how would you, you fit the blocks on top? You had blocks just float, have to have blocks just floating. So we had to make it smaller so the blocks could support each other. Okay. Good thinking. All right, have y'all documented your work with pictures? We did a video of it. Okay, great. Good, good thinking. Yes. It looks really good. So fun. No credit. Okay. We are planning on having a chimney somewhere right here. Um, this is where the fire is going to go in. It's probably going to be right here. I think we're going to build an arch right there. Um, right now, Layla is building the roof of it. Um, and then, yeah, so the fire is going to go in there through the roof. Up in there. Oop, fall down. And then it's gonna fire up the pottery, and then we're gonna build a chimney just right here. And once we finish the roofing of that, we might need some more support. The lesson objectives were met. The students were able to sketch, label, and build their models quite well. Although some models were better than others, the activity engaged them in using the correct terminology for kilns, which will be important in the future, and thinking creatively and critically about an engineering design which they have created. I will use their diagrams to check for understanding, and next, I'll ask each partnership to give feedback on another group's sketch. If I could have done something differently, I would have definitely given them more time for research. The students love watching YouTube videos of primitive technology, and this would definitely have helped them to have more confidence in designing their own kilns. Future activities in this unit include visiting the LSU Ceramics Department to learn about modern kilns and the chemical reactions necessary to turn clay into actual pottery. This will also give my students an idea of what kinds of things they can do with the skills they've learned. There are actual jobs out there which require such knowledge. We'll be working with the math of budgeting as we purchase our kilns, such construction supplies. Uh, the students, as you can imagine, are super excited about building. Um, and so we'll also be learning to document their work. Each partnership will be creating a website to share their work, not only with other EBR students, but with the whole world. Thanks so much for watching.